Hello everyone, so once again I jumped to Twitter and YouTube to ask you guys for community submitted balance changes. Basically, if you had the idea to influence changes for weapons, either for this game or going into Splatoon 3, what would you pick? And I'm gonna go through the best of your guys' responses. Let's do it! First up, we have ballpoint adjustments, probably for either game here since it's not specified. Increase the long range shot velocity so shots travel a little bit faster, that's reverting an old nerf. 210p for the special instead of 220, I'm fine with that. Big ones here are damage. Actually, wanting to go back on the damage to 30 and 32 basically the numbers ballpoint had when it came out and then basically nerfing mp into the ground or a new mp effect i actually really like this i think part of the hard part about buffing ballpoint a little bit back to normal is knowing what exactly to change shot velocity is a main one i hear all the time and points for special but if that's not enough i think doing a little bit of damage is one of the more fair ones that can happen as long as mp and damage up is replaced with something else which already needs to happen anyway so yeah i'm fine with it i think this would be good changes going into three. Next weapon on the rework list is Tetras. We're gonna go with the damage increase from 28 to 30. Once again, I'm assuming here this is ditching MPU damage up. Lightweight weapons, so basically plus two swim and run speed at all times, sort of. It's literally called light Tetras on one of the kits, so it's kind of weird that it's not. I know it's referring to the color, I don't care. In addition, nerfs, 4% for each roll instead of three, so that means the quad roll will use 16% instead of 12. And points for special will be 200 or 210. I like it. I think that roll efficiency is really low, and with how powerful uh, Tetris are going to be with the new movement options and having actual kits, I think nerfing that is fair, so it's on a bit more of a cooldown. I would even maybe say 5% instead of 3%. If we're giving it an extra 2 damage per shot and lightweight, I would go with the 5% for the rolls, but I think these are good changes. An expensive special would make sense. Thermal Ink Rework. First of all, it's affecting AoE weapons, so if you don't know any weapon that has splash damage, such as Machine, Explosher, or Blaster, only the direct hit applies thermaling. So yes, the weapons that are most able to capitalize off of thermal can't. So they're changing in a way that AoE weapons can now track your opponent. I think if you want to do this, which would be a good idea because that's kind of the whole point of thermal, you would have to nerf the duration down. So maybe if you use an AoE hitbox, thermal only applies for half the time that it does normally. That would be more fair. Uh, for Splatoon 3, I think thermal either needs to be reworked so it's way more useful on more things or they need to scrap it. I'm just not a big fan of these abilities that are useful on like three weapons in the game total. So yeah, all for changing thermal if we're going to try to keep it. Ink armor. Armor cannot be activated while at least one teammate has the effect on, meaning you have to wait until all your teammates ran out of armor before you can use another one. This also basically puts a cooldown on double armor if you have to wait until the effect runs out and then you have to wait two seconds for it to be changed. It basically completely ruins double armor comps being as strong because the whole idea of double armor is the second one chains while you have the first one on. So you basically get that extended duration or when your armor breaks you insta get another, which is really cheap. So I kind of like that. But at the same time, it might be a little bit awkward trying to press the stick and just seeing like, oh, one person has ink armor on. In a coordinated setting, that could be more interesting because you could have that person get their armor broken to chain the other. But in a solo queue setting, it might be a little bit annoying. But I like the idea of getting rid of double armor. Last ditch effort, the effects of LDE wear off while having the lead, which I actually really like. I think that's a pretty fair downside and probably one of the most creative uh, LDE changes I've seen. Point sensor, enemies can no longer gain special points while located. And then we nerf the tracking time and make it see only at one. Okay. Well, obviously this would be for Splatoon 2 because point marker already got revamped. But this effect is actually really interesting, but no longer gain special points while tracked. I don't... I don't know if I would have it so you can't gain points at all, but I think a sub weapon that slows down like maybe every two points for special painted only counts towards one, like it's cut in half. That could be really interesting, though I think that should be its own sub weapon rather than attached to a location effect. Spore says they feel bad for CX flow, so changes for heavy baller, increasing the explosion radius by 15%, so paint's like 15% better, the lethal radius increased by 33%, and the contact damage of bumping baller from 50 to 65. I like this idea, it still maintains heavy baller being weaker than normal one in terms of what you can do with it because your mobility is still limited, but they made it more powerful to compensate. The one thing I would get rid of is the painting range. I think exclusively the lethal damage and the bump damage, especially the bump damage are the stuff I really like, but I don't think it should paint that well because that could still be so good for a capping zone and other areas, but I like that. I think it's cool to give heavy baller unique properties. Blue gadoolies. End lag before shooting after a dodge roll decrease, shot firing speed after rolling decreased. So basically 
basically what Dylan told me about Gluga is after you roll, it actually takes a decent bit of time before you start shooting and he wants that time reduced. Personally, after testing it, I think that's actually really fair, but I don't think it needs a fire rate reduction, maybe by like one frame if they're going to make it shoot faster sooner, I guess, but I wouldn't do it by that much. There you go. This is part of why it's good to ask people who actually main their weapon what to change with it, because I would have never thought about that. So there you go. A problem with Gluga that most people probably don't know even exists. Samage just says, also, a single missile should never be able to one-shot. I am 100% all for getting rid of missiles OHKO hitbox, because that would make the max damage 50, and if you run a sub of bomb defense, at least three missiles would need to hit close to you to kill, which I think is absolutely fair. If they were going to nerf missile, this would probably be one of the main ways I would want them to do it. I am all for that lethal hitbox being gone. I have no idea why it's there in the first place. It's very dumb. Squelcher rework. Rolling costs from 8 to 7%, so still 2% above the 5 it originally was. Damage 28 to 30 for no MPU damage up. Bullet size increase to 2.5, and a bullet velocity increase. Yeah, Squelcher bullets travel pretty slowly, so I'm okay with this. The one change here I wouldn't do is the bullet size increase. I think 2 is plenty, and upping the velocity would already help, so I'm up for the rest of these. Slight bit of velocity, slightly less ink hungry rolls, and a bit better damage for getting rid of MPU is a good change. 96 gal damage increase from 62 to 96, but the fire rate is increased from 12 to 27, in consumption to 0.5 to 6. MPU effect change from damage up to accuracy. I think in Splatoon 3, we might see 96 get a damage buff from 62 to 70 or 72, because in both Splatoon 1 and 2, 96 players like to run damage up to 70 in order to combo with things, but 96 would be too drastic. I'm aware this is a rework, and yeah, it'd be cool if it did 96 the way 52 does, but the reason they don't is because it would just be really annoying. Like, just having a weapon that can randomly 96 you, like, it's close to bamboo, basically. It's just threatening a slightly less lethal one tap. It's just too annoying. Mini, Heavy, and Hydra are able to respin their charge with Ballpoint and Nautilus. I've heard this idea from Smiling Players a lot, which is basically make the whole recharge mechanic that Ballpoint and Nautilus do a universal thing, and I have to say, no. That would be way too broken on Hydra, and Mini is already really good. I think Heavy is the one weapon you could maybe see it on, but I think that would still be adding more complexity to a weapon that's supposed to be the simple one in this class. I actually really like the idea of the respin mechanic being something exclusive to those two weapons, and I wouldn't add it to other spotlings, personally. Barry wants an E-Leader rework. Range increased by 10%. Okay, that's a lot, but I'll get to that later. Painting has been reduced to be between Splatoon 1 and 2. I'm guessing this excludes MPU, which would totally be fair. Increased ink efficiency slightly, or decreased, I'm guessing is what was meant here, okay? And special points are set at 200p. So this is basically what I want for leader. Leader paints way too well and doesn't play for the range value. The one thing I would critique here is I think the range increase is too much. 10% is a lot. I think a better one is to just make the MPU curve stack better and maybe have it go closer to 6 or 7% instead of 5. You can now see auto bombs. You throw through walls and obstacles a certain radius from them, which can be increased with some power. In addition, when they explode, anyone in its radius is briefly tagged with thermaling. I really like this. Cool way to add depth to auto bomb. It's very small buffs, but I like it. Not much to say. And my favorite community balance change comes from Reed, which is a GooTuber change for Splatoon 3, basically allowing you to move like normal and throw subs even while holding a charge. Honestly, I think this could just be something you slap onto the charge hold rather than having to make it a bit more specific and would be a fair buff for GooTuber if they took away something like the overtuned paint it has and instead let it use sub weapons, especially for things like curling or fizzy, that could be so useful. And it'd be a good way to help set it apart. So yeah, I'm a big fan of it. Finally, we have a Clash Blaster rework. Reduce the blast radius to match other blasters. Now it's a bit hard to tell what this is because a lot of them have different ones. Blaster and Rapid of 33, range is 35, Luna is like 36 point something. I'm gonna assume they meant 35 where most blasters were at the beginning of Splatoon 2. Strafe speed to 0.72. I like that. I think Clash should strafe faster so I'm all for it. Give it better frame data because it's the same as rapid. I'm fine with that. So reducing it a little bit so it's a little bit faster and getting in and out of the ink makes sense to me. Finally, perfect jump accuracy, which I think is fair because directs on Clash are already kind of not incentivized enough and reducing the blast radius would mean you rely on directs more, so I like it. I would like to do a little bit better damage being 32 and 65. Doesn't change break points, but helps a little bit more. But I like this rework and especially the frame data idea. I know a lot of people want the blast radius thing to be changed, and I think this is one of the better ways of going about it. All right, but with that being said, that is all of your guys' community submitted balance changes. It was pretty interesting to go through, and we'll see if any of them actually happen in the third game. Thank you guys for watching.